It seemed that the Foundation was all but rid of SCP-682 after an unlikely glitch in reality sent the hard-to-destroy reptile deep into a limitless interdimensional abyss known simply as the Back Rooms. This meant that the standard reality, also known as the Front Rooms, was safe from one of the most dangerous monsters in existence, but that didn't mean the anomaly was neutralized. SCP-682 had been slowly but surely making its way through every level of the back rooms and taking out its aggression on any living thing that crossed its path. Well, except for Jerry. There was something about the entity, which resembled Blue Hyacinth Macaw, that had made it tolerable to SCP-682, which was rare for the reptile, as it infamously regarded most other life forms as disgusting and worthy only to be destroyed. Jerry had been frightened away by an encounter with the archers of level 10, and ever since SCP-682 had been looking for the little guy. This search eventually led the creature to backtrack through the suburbs of level 9 and enter level 11, the presumably infinite city. This was the largest settlement that SCP-682 had seen in the back rooms, and whether or not it found its avian companion, it was eager to cause some havoc among the locals. And speaking of the locals, what a sorry sight they were. Countless facelings were acting like ordinary humans going about their day, strolling down the sidewalks and entering buildings, seemingly with no reason other than to humor the themed environment. A few of the facelings were even walking hounds on leashes, in a grotesque pantomime of a dog walker. 682 was infuriated. Somehow, in its seemingly infinite ways of causing the creature distress, the backrooms had managed to combine the two things that annoyed it most, the so-called civilized creatures of its native reality, and the equally disgusting entities that dwelled within the backrooms. Unable to stand to look at this any longer, SCP-682 went on a violent rampage, attacking every entity in sight. Its previous objective of seeking Jerry no longer mattered to it, as the anomalies discussed for every part of this alternate reality overwhelmed all of its thoughts. If 682 found itself starring in Pixar's Inside Out, all of the emotions in its mind would be variations of disgust. As the body started to pile up, SCP-682 began to sense something in the airwaves of this level. It soon adapted a long-range radio antenna in order to better pick up the frequency. The voice on the other was calm and sounded like a middle-aged human male. You're listening to Radio Backrooms, the voice said. If you're just tuning in now, welcome to Talkin' with Ralph. I'm your host, Ralph. There you are, SCP-682 said, triangulating the radio signal with its internal senses. This Ralph character was going to be next to die. Well, he would be next, if nothing else with a dumb look about it got in the way. And in the back rooms, the chances were high that a new pathetic creature for SCP-682 to destroy would be around every corner. Either way, 682 marked the new waypoint on its mental map and started to zero in on Ralph's location. Looks like we got ourselves a brand new entity in level 11, Ralph's voice echoed in SCP-682's skull. I'll be giving away a free time slot to whichever faction bags the beast within the next 12 hours. SCP-682 realized almost immediately that it must have been the new entity that Ralph was referring to. It was familiar with the idea of factions within the backrooms because of its previous encounters with the major explorers group, but now the situation threatened to get interesting. Maybe there would be some factions here with actual combat training on par with the mobile task forces. Could these new factions pose a challenge to such a powerful Keter-class anomaly? 682 heard the buzzing of tiny propellers overhead and saw a group of surveillance drones flying towards it. With cat-like agility, it leaped into the air and swatted the drones with its limbs and claws. The cheap hunks of carbon fiber were shattered easily. Halfway across the city, several members of the drone surveillance squad were throwing their headsets on the ground in frustration. With one faction having missed its chance, the next was quick to arrive. Five cool teens on bikes and skateboards rolled up to the end of the street. They were all dressed in 80s fashion for some reason. Check it out! That's one righteous reptile, said one of the teens. Gnarly, said another. 682 cringed. Even with its limited understanding of human culture, it could tell that 80s nostalgia was overplayed, 
and that the era of 90s and 2000s nostalgia would soon arrive. And what better way to hasten it than getting these troubled teens off the street? Just don't ask where they went after that. Another so-called faction down in SCP-682 was already feeling uncontested. So far, these humans were even less intimidating than the entities. This was a bit mind-boggling to SCP-682, considering that the Foundation was made up of humans and they had managed to bag several much scarier anomalies than anything in the back rooms. Naturally, SCP-682 included itself among that number. The radio studio we're talking with Ralph was broadcasting from was getting ever closer. Taking a slight detour, the reptile tore straight through Level 11's MEG base of operations. Once again, the explorers within proved to be no match for the creature. It emerged on the other side of the building, back into the city streets, and was immediately confronted with several new explorers. These humans weren't exactly 80s fashionable, opting instead for tactical gear and long black cloaks. They had a haunted look about them, and each carried a mighty spear. Sinner! They shouted in unison, The eyes of Argos are upon you! SCP-682 pounced and made short work of them, but paused warily when it noticed the presence of a slightly taller humanoid that had been standing behind the group. It was dressed the same as the humans, but it had an aura of mythic fury. The humanoid had no eyes, but somehow, SCP-682 could feel itself being watched, as if from all places at once. It was unsettling for the creature, as it felt like being back at the Foundation. Contained in a vat of acid while a science lab full of researchers watched and judged. Yes, judged. That was the feeling, and SCP-682 knew it all too well. The humanoid stepped forward, brandishing its spear. What was it with this place and spears? SCP-682 wondered. The powerful entity it had fought on Level 7 had also wielded the spear. Was that weapon meant to be some indication that this one was just as tough? I am all-seeing Argos, and I have seen that your sins are innumerable, said the humanoid entity. Argos lunged forward, thrusting with its spear towards SCP-682. The reptile received the brunt of the strike and was launched backward. Without even giving 682 time to recover, Argos thrust its spear through the creature, pinning it to the concrete. Sinners must be punished, Argos bellowed, pushing the spear deeper into the reptile's body. SCP-682 struck back with a bite, but to its surprise, Argos seemed to have an impossibly high tolerance for pain, and its wounds seemed to be healing almost as soon as they opened. This told 682 that close-range attacks wouldn't get this entity's spear out of its back. It needed to get the freaky humanoid out of spear range, and then hit back with a reach weapon of its own. Tapping once again into the radio frequencies, 682 levied a blast of concussive sonic energy from its body. While this didn't damage Argos, it did achieve the intended effect of knocking the entity a few feet back. SCP-682 used this chance to get a bit of distance and readied its next weapon, its own reptilian tail, now elongated and equipped with a sharp blade at the end. In terms of reach, SCP-682's tail whip outclassed Argos's spear, the battle was on now. 682 swung its powerful blade in an attempt to cut through the enemy's weapon, but it seemed that the spear had the same regenerative abilities as its wielder. You're not human, SCP-682 taunted Argos. You're even more disgusting! You are a sinner, Argos replied. Regeneration was one of SCP-682's strong suits, too, and the spear wounds that Argos had given it had already recovered. Using the bladed whip of its tail, SCP-682 kept Argos and his spear out of close quarters. It continued to slash the entity, but the wounds were healing too quickly to leave an impression. Argos was also skilled enough with his spear that he began to deflect the whip and advance towards 682. It was time to try something crazy. So crazy, it just might work. Argos stopped in his tracks, as suddenly, SCP-682 was nowhere to be found. The reptile had become effectively invisible, and this was because it had adapted to counter Argos's true vision. Now encased in a ghostly aura of sin-cloaking energy, SCP-682 maneuvered around Argos and prepared to finish it off. If you're like me, then this won't bring you down, but it will hurt Argos, and I will enjoy it. Calling upon the memories of the acid vats back at the Foundation, 
SCP-682 secreted a powerful acid across its entire body and leapt onto Argos's back. The thing about spears is, while they are ideal for engaging the opponent at a distance, they were far less useful if that same opponent was grappling your limbs. With his weapon rendered unusable, Argos was now locked in a battle of endurance with SCP-682. It had generated the most powerful acid it could generate, potent enough to even cause a bit of damage to itself. It's over, Argos. SCP-682 chuckled. You may be good at fighting, but only one of us has spent years being contained within a caustic prison. You lose. SCP-682 held down Argos for as long as it took for the acid to fully immobilize him. The entity had struggled to break free, but 682 was able to continually grow strong enough to tighten its grip. With the boss of this level destroyed, SCP-682 continued towards the radio tower. Um, congratulations, you, Ralph said over the radio. You win, lizard man. How about you and I have a nice peaceful chat? Not having any of this, SCP-682 beamed its own words into the radio station along the same frequency. Tell me how to get to the next level, and I'll consider sparing you. But only because you're that worthless. Haha, <laughs> I hear you, lizard man! Ralph responded nervously. Ralph directed SCP-682 to a specific window inside of one of the nearby skyscrapers. When SCP-682 opened this window, it was immediately transported into a cramped white room with a table that had a single chair nearby. This was level 12. SCP-682 was most assuredly going back for Ralph later. Yet another level seemed specifically created to play on the ennui of the human condition, which was something that 682 still had no frame of reference for. Humans were afraid of the stupidest things, 682 thought to itself. It waited in this white room for what felt like several hours, until it was eventually no-clipped back into level 11. Ralph! SCP-682 roared, loud enough to shatter the glass windows on several buildings in the infinite city. It charged out of the skyscraper and onto the roof of a nearby apartment building, which just so happened to be another surface with no-clip capabilities. 682 never got to hear a response back from the talk radio host before it fell several stories down into another level of the back rooms entirely. Level 13. An apartment building that, while not technically infinite, was presumed to have a very high number of floors. The hallways were more cramped than the hotel on level 5, so SCP-682 shrunk itself a bit to avoid getting stuck. It gritted its teeth and prepared for the usual routine. Three. Two, one. A clump, a female moth, and a hound came slinking down the hallway, like a random encounter in a JRPG. SCP-682 hated these backrooms entities so very much, and could barely fathom why they could stand each other. It seemed that no matter what level these hostile entities appeared, the goon squad only ever attacked creatures that weren't native to the backrooms. Without further deliberation, 682 ran the Three Stooges over, trampling them with its superior powers, it was more than done taking small fry seriously, and that included Curly, Larry, and Moe. As it wandered through the halls, SCP-682 started to hear the droning, easy-listening music which pervaded this entire level. It was the sort of sound that humans used in elevators and grocery stores, places where the dull mundanity of life was meant to serve as a comfort and yet it seemed to be the soundtrack of the backroom's latest hellish level. In a way, 682 started to feel pity for the humans trapped here, not because their suffering was a bad thing from its perspective, but because of the fragility of their finite psyches. If whatever forces that created the backrooms did intend it to be a realm that tormented humans, the humans were definitely making it too easy. And if humans themselves made this to contain other humans, the implications were even sillier. When the very structures that humans built to shelter themselves from the elements, apartment buildings, cities, towns, were able to cause this much fear in them, it was a sure sign that humanity was always doomed to retreat screaming back into the wilderness after centuries of learning nothing from its collective delusion of civilization. Or at least they would be doomed to that fate if they weren't already doomed to be wiped out by SCP-682, just like every entity in the back rooms. 
682 wouldn't rest until every last faceling, clump, death moth, death rat, smiler, hound, duller, burster, and any other ridiculous entity that dared to crawl through these wretched corridors was personally sent to its end. It got so pumped up thinking about this that it didn't even notice itself no clipping again. Thousands of floors rushed by in the blink of a moment until the reptile finally dropped through the lobby of the apartment building. A new level unlocked, just like that. SCP-682 regained its bearings on a forest floor covered in a vibrant crimson grass. The trees had pitch black bark, almost blending in with the night itself. The sky above was a glistening sea of bright stars. This was level 14, known to most explorers as Paradise. This level had a strange power which supposedly made the explorer happy and feeling as though they belonged. However, much like the darkness within the suburbs, Level 14's happiness-inducing atmosphere would have the opposite effect on the hard-to-destroy reptile. It hated this forest even more than any previous level of the backrooms and wanted out immediately. From experience, 682 knew that poking around would eventually result in it finding the entrance to the next level, so it hightailed its way through the trees. It needed to find that exit desperately. As it ran through the woods, 682 could hear howling somewhere far in the distance, and it didn't sound like a pack of wild animals. Disturbingly, it sounded like a crowd of humans attempting noises similar to wolves, but they were committing so much to the performance that it almost seemed like they truly believed they were wolves. Whatever hippy-dippy nonsense was going on here wasn't SCP-682's concern. Right now, it was burning with so much contempt for level 14 that it could barely think straight. Its feet crashed through a field of pale white bones, lying just beneath the grass, but it kept on running. It collided with a tree, downing it in a second, but it just kept running. The howling ceased in the distance, and still SCP-682 continued to run as fast and as far as it could. Then, against all odds, the creature's own mind began to turn against it as the effect of Level 14 continued to take hold. You don't belong anywhere. You are a mistake of nature. SCP-682 could recognize its own voice echoing in its head, and for the first time, it was terrified of itself. You are a thing that cannot ever be happy. This paradise will never accept you. Nowhere will ever accept you. You are disgusting. SCP-682 froze in its tracks. There was no exit from this place. The backrooms had won the sick game it was playing with the reptile's existence. It would be trapped here forever in this inverted paradise for humans, a self-loathing immortal without any hope of escape. It was so paralyzed by the immense disgust that it felt for itself that it almost didn't notice a speck of blue amongst all the red, the blue on the feathers of a hyacinth macaw. Jerry, SCP-682 said aloud, don't follow him. You are a monster. You will never know companionship or love. Shut up, you disgusting creature! SCP-682 growled back at its own mind. Shakily, it began to move its legs in the direction of Jerry. The bird-like entity was the only thing that still felt real about level 14. Everything practically faded away into a churning ocean of red and black. It took every ounce of willpower that SCP-682 had but it kept moving towards Jerry. You are the most disgusting monster to ever exist. The Foundation should have destroyed you. The Backrooms will destroy you. You don't belong in this world. SCP-682 did everything it could to shut out the voice, even as Jerry took off and flew deeper into the crimson forests of level 14. Without even realizing, 682 had grown a pair of blue wings of its own, it followed Jerry through the trees and then higher toward the starry sky. One thought cut all the negativity that had been swirling through SCP-682's mind. It doesn't matter if I don't belong anywhere else. Jerry is all I need. A light shone down from above, and suddenly it was as if Level 14 itself was rejecting SCP-682. While the reptile was focused on Jerry, a piece of the sky seemed to glitch and then as if it were a solid piece of machinery, it fell down toward the red grass below. Behind the fallen chunk of sky was a metallic hallway, not unlike some of those back at the Foundation. 
Jerry flew through the opening, and SCP-682 followed with its own macaw-like feathered wings. A shift in gravity, much like the event on Level 7, occurred, and 682 soon found itself standing inside of a long, silvery corridor, having come through a hole in the ceiling. Goodbye, Level 14. Hello, Level 15. The Futuristic Hallways. Oh yeah, the future rules. Here we are, in the future. And it's right, it was certainly a lot less of a personal nightmare to SCP-682. Jerry had clearly flown ahead, but 682 knew somewhere deep down that it wouldn't have made it here without him. If the reptile had any respect for the concept of fairness, it probably considered the debt for Jerry fleeing in level 10 to be repaid. But its empathy wasn't quite so sophisticated that it could weigh favors like that. So it soldiered on, looking to catch up with Jerry for no particular reason, at least as far as it knew. The hallways were definitely man-made in appearance, but from a time so technologically advanced that even the Foundation couldn't dream of it. The best part about Level 15 was that it was filled with what appeared to be human remains. Most of these corpses were marked with knife and gunshot wounds, perhaps the result of some kind of mass slaughter. Either way, it was clear that all of these humans had been dead for a long time. The only good human is a dead human. SCP-682 mused to itself. It seemed that the future did, in fact, kind of rule. Because from SCP-682's perspective, Level 15 was populated entirely by, quote, good humans. There was still no sign of Jerry, but there were also no annoying entities to waste the reptile's time. Compared to Level 14, the futuristic hallways were the real paradise. While it was as far away as ever from feeling any kind of authentic contentment, SCP-682 decided that this place was acceptable. No life, no foundation. I'm starting to like it here. Now go check out Could SCP-682 Be Contained in the Back Rooms? And SCP-682 slaughters through the back rooms for more of the hard-to-destroy lizard wrecking this liminal hell.